Hi friends, today we are now going to present one of the most important topics that is the delta which is a depositional landform by fluvial activity. Landform developed by the fluvial activity. Basically, if we can define the delta, it is a low-lying area that is formed at the mouth of the river due to the deposition of the alluvial that is carried out by the river or stream, right? According to Strother, in 1975, delta is a Deposition of the sand, mud, gravel, etc., by the stream where it flows into a body of standing water. However, the delta is first introduced by famous historians, historian of Greek, that is Herodotus, at the by studying of the Nile River in Egypt. He applied this term after studying the triangular deposition of the features of the Nile River in the Egypt. So there are some subtle important condition which is required to develop the delta. What are the favorable conditions? Because all the river in the world not from the delta. There are but most of the river from the delta. So for the formation of the delta, the favorable conditions are required like suitable place in the form of silo in the form of shallow sea or ocean second long courses of the river Therefore, it can help to carry out the enough amount of sediments for the formation of the delta. Medium or less size of sediments. Because if the large size of sediments are available, then it will be deposited nearer to the youthful states or mature states. But uh, when the size of the sediments or particles are less, then it will carry out for long distance. Abundant supply of sediment. So for the formation of delta, the en enough amount of sediments is required. Fifth, relatively clumsy relatively clumsy at the mouth of the river, so that the ocean currents, strong wave or the high tidal wave do not interfere for the formation of the delta. And most important, the stable condition of 
sea coast see your coast because we have found that uh, the sea coast are uh, cause are affected by the emergence or submergence so this condition not help through development of the delta so for the formation of the delta stable conditions of the sea coast are required which is not subjected to fake frequent emergence or submergence now come to the size of the delta the size of the delta are vary based on the uh, this favorable conditions if we consider the size we can found that uh, our gangetic delta which is the world's largest delta approximately 124000 square kilometer is covered next is the nile delta which is covered by approximately 30000 square kilometer and there are several small delta also available however the size of the delta it's depend upon the characteristics of vegetal cover the rate of erosion and deposition by river and stream this natural phenomena based on this natural phenomena we can found that uh, the size of the delta will be large or small or medium size now we will start out study about the structure of the delta the deposition of the sediment takes place in such a way that the large sediments are deposited towards the coastal lands and the size of the sediments gradually decreases with increasing distance from the sea so on an average the delta consists of three types of beds so there are three types of beds are found in the delta one is the top set bed another one is the fore set bed and the last one is the bottom set bed so this top set bed that is represent the upper part of the delta where the sediments of are quite extensive and wide gentle slope and 
that basically lie above the mince level. Next, the forced bed. Forced bed always under the sea water, and these are steeply inclined. And the bottom sea bed, these beds are basically formed at the lower part of the relatively horizontal bed with finer sediments. This delta is undergo subsidence because of the gradual sedimentation. Gradual sedimentation. and consequent increase in the weight of the delta material compaction of the sediments caused by load of sediment and the enormous thickness of the sediments that causes the isostatic adjustment. So if you consider the classification of the delta, so there are basically two types of classification are available. That the first one is based on its shape. Because if you consider this classification that the size, shape, the formation or the growth of the delta <coughs> are different. But normally, overall, we can classify it in the two categories one is the shape and another one is the growth. Based on the shape of the delta, it is first classified as the arcuate delta. This arcuate delta is are formed when the river water is dense than the sea water and the deltas are made up of the river water is dense than the sea water and most of the deltas are formed with the gravel, sand, seals, etc. And so basically these are predominant in the semi arid region. For example, if we that is the Ganga Delta, Nile Delta are the best example of this Arcuit Delta. Next come to the butt foot delta. It is also known as the digit delta. This butt foot delta are formed due to the deposition of the fine metals. And based on its shape, it is also known as the butt foot delta. For example, if we consider it. So th this delta is look like the, the foot of the butt. Next is coming to the estuarine delta.
this is still to form due to the filling of the s2 that is by the river for example narmada and tapi river having this type of delta another most important delta that is lower delta that is formed when the distributor is start making their own delta then the main river start to retard it so this type of delta is formed truncated delta these truncated deltas are developed due to when the sewers and current are strong and the eroded the sediment deposit on the river mouth this eroded and dissected delta is known as the truncated delta next cuspid delta also known as the tooth shaped delta based on its shape so this delta are formed when the sedimentary material deposited on either side of the river mouth like if we consider this as a river then the font look like that that both the sides of the river has been deposited like <coughs> tiver in italy as a best example of the best example of this tooth shape delta or the cuspid delta on the basis of its growth we can classify it as growing delta block delta and abundant delta the growing delta when the delta grows towards the sea and increases the size then it is known as the growing delta this growth it depends on its velocity of the stream nature of sediment supply and effect of the sea waves or ocean current so these are the basic factors that will help to the growth of the delta for example the nile delta which is growth 3.7 meter per year whereas po river this is for the nile 60 meter per year next come to the block delta this block delta is formed when the seaward growth is blocked by the sweeps and the ocean current through its erosional activity then this block the mouth of the streams and the form of delta swim and the last one is the abundant delta which is basically formed when the river mouth sipped its mouth into the sea or oceans the new deltas are formed and the old delta which is known as the abundant delta <coughs> for example if we if 
if the rivers are flowing like that. If the deltas are formed like that, first rivers are froze. Now it is shifted its channels like that. So this part of the delta is the old delta, and this is the new delta. So the formation or the growth of the delta is means there is no in growth has been found in the in its current form. So it is known as the abandoned delta. So that's all about the delta. We'll talk about the last uh, in our next classes about the another tubular landforms. Thank you for watching this video.